Hey, how's it guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to display annotation when you hover your mouse to a data label using Map I Love in Python. So here's the example we'll be creating in this video. So if I hover my mouse to one of the data point, noticing that an annotation is going to pop up and display the corner value. And if I hover my mouse to a different data point with a different color, it's going to uh, change the background accordingly based on the data point. Now let me close this window. From the import statement, I'm going to import the pyplot module from my pyplot. I'll name this as plt. And let me increase the font size. And to generate the data points, I'm going to use numpy for that. So for step one, I'm going to create a scatter chart. But first, I need to generate some data points. From the numpy library, that random, I want to generate 20 random numbers. And it's going to be x, and it's going to be y. And to change the data points back on color based on the uh, value, I'm going to generate another 20 sets of uh, values. And I'm going to set the range between 1 and 4. Let me take a look. So it's been a while since I used NumPy. Oh. And here let me set the size based on the X array. All right, so it's between 1 and 4. And I'll name this as colors. And to be able to set the background color to match the uh, data points, we need to normalize our data values using plot.normalize. And it's going to be between 1 and 4. And I'll name the output as norm. Then I want to create a color map profile. And I'll name this as cmap. And from the pyplot module, the cm, I want to use the purple, yellow, and green color profile. Now I can create my figure and the X object. And to create a scatter chart, I'm going to reference the scatter method. And I'll name the output scatter. Inside the scatter method, I need to assign the X and Y arrays. And for the colors, uh, this is going to be C. It goes to colors. And for the marker size, I'm going to set the size to 100. Then I'm going to uh, assign a color map to the C map parameter. Then I'm going to uh, normalize the graph. Right, so if I simply grab the, the graph, and if you have a typo, uh, this should be normalized. Right, so if I graph the, the scatter graph, and this is what we have so far. Now for step two, we're going to create our annotation object. Create annotation object. Right, so from the X object that annotated, I'm going to set the default text with empty string. And also set the default corner to zero and zero. And as for the text location, I want to set the distance 15 away from the X and Y corner. So it's going to be distance from X and Y. And for the text corner type, I want to set this to offset points. And 
And to format the uh, text box that contains the text, here I'm going to reference the B box parameter. Inside the dictionary, we can uh, specify the box style. I want to set this to round. And as for the face color, I want to set the default color to white. Next, we need to set the arrow using the arrow props parameter. And for the arrow style, I want to make sure that I display the pointer and the style key is going to be dash followed by the uh, forward symbol. And let me name the output annotation. All right, so if I reference the annotation object, if I set the visibility to true, let me take a look. So here's the arrow. And I want to set the visibility to uh, false. I want to hide the uh, label first because I only want to display the label when I hover my mouse to one of the data points. And it's going to be step three. Implement the hover event to display annotations. So when you are using my Loves library, we can actually implement different events to the canvas. So from figure, the canvas, and we can connect the canvas to different events using MPL underscore connect method. They want to insert the event name. And for the uh, hovering event, this is going to be motion notify event. And here we need to assign a function when the event is triggered. So if I do uh, here, if I insert a Lombarda function, so basically every time when I hover my mouse to the uh, my parallel figure, this event is going to be triggered. Then it's going to run this function. I'm going to create a function to assign to the motion notify event. I'm going to name the function motion hover. And when this event is triggered, it's going to pass the event object to the function. And I'm going to name the parameter event. All right, so first we're going to get the annotation visibility uh, status of state. So I reference the annotation object. And I can get the visibility state by referencing the get visible method. Next, I want to check uh, if the mouse cursor is inside the X. All right, so we can do that by referencing the event argument that in X is equals to X. So if this condition is met, here, let me show you an example. Let's do y. Change the function with motion hover function. Right, so here, uh, let's do this. Right, so I know if I hover my mouse outside the graph, because uh, this condition is not met, so therefore, it's not going to print the Y value. But if I have a mouse inside the uh, chart, it's going to set the condition to true, then print the Y string. And to check if my mouse cursor is selecting a data point, I can reference in the scattered object. Then I can use the contains method and answer the event argument to check if my mouse cursor is selecting a data point. And this method is going to return two items. The first item is going to tell me whether or not uh, if the mouse cursor is selecting a data point. And I'll name the output is contender. The second item is going to return the annotation index object. 
and I'll name the outputs annotation underscore index. All right, so here, let me go ahead and uh, print both variables. Right, so here I'm getting false because my mouse cursor is not selecting a data point. But if I move my mouse to one of the data point here, and it's going to return two for the uh, first value, followed by additionary with the uh, data label index position. In this case, it's going to be uh, seven. And the array is going to always containing one element at a time. So here I'm going to insert another if statement. I'm going to say if is contained. They want to grab the data points location. And I can do that by referencing the scatter graph object that gets offsets. And because the annotation index will always return one element from the array. So from the annotation index, I can reference uh, the index key followed by the element's position. And this will give me the data point location. They want to update the annotations x and y corner by referencing the x, y uh, attribute. And this will be data point location. And as for the label down to uh, display, let's name this as text label. All right, so I want to uh, format the corner to two decimal places. And this will be dot 2f for the x and for the y. Dot format. And it's going to be data point location zero and one. Now I'm going to update the annotations text. Now here let me insert the else statement. And because we can only have two conditions, true or false. So if the is container uh, variable value is false, they want to check the annotations visibility. And I want to make sure that the annotation is always set to invisible. Then I'm going to drop the graph. Now let's take a look at what we have so far. All right, so here I'm getting a, I'm getting an error. Oh, so I forgot to uh, name the output. And let's name this as annotation visibility. Right, so if I point my mouse to a data point, actually uh, it's not displaying anything. And that's because the annotation's visibility is set to false by default. Right, so let me try again. So if I point my mouse to one of the data points. Oh, so here I forgot one thing. I forgot to recreate the figure. Right, so if I point my mouse to one of the data points, it's going to display the uh, annotation. Now we have the feature implemented to our uh, figure. The only thing we have to do is to format the uh, box that contains the text. And this one's optional. Right, so here I want to insert the annotation object 
And we can reference the text box by referencing the get bbox underscore patch method. And I want to format the uh, box color using the set face color method. All right, so here, uh, because we have a color map profile already created, I'm going to reference the C map object. And because we normalize the graph, so I need to also uh, insert the uh, norm object to give us the correct value. Then I'll reference the colors object followed by uh, the annotation index. And here I want to set the uh, box opacity to 40%. And we can do that by using the set alpha method. And it's going to be 0.4. So this is going to be the entire script. Now if I run the script to display the graph. And here uh, if I point to uh, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, it's going to display the annotation with the uh, bus color that matches to the data point. Alright, so this is going to be everything I'm going to share in this video, and hopefully you guys found this video useful. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.